Welcome to Berkings County Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. This meeting is being recorded, televised, and viewable on SwiftTel Channel 19, ITC Channel 168, or the Berkings County YouTube channel. I now call this meeting to order. Um, first tonight, I would like to welcome new board member Tim Paulson. Thank you. Moving on, we'll go to approval of amendments. Is there a motion? Motion by Diedrich. Second. Second by Vanderbilt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Items to be added to the commission. Mem but agenda items to be added by commission members or staff. I don't have anything additional. I'll just bring it up during my director's report on home site. Okay. In item four, invitation for citizens to schedule a time on the commission agenda for an item not listed. Seeing none, number five, disclosure of conflicts of interest, uh, relationships to the applicant or ex parte communication. And item six, approval agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Vanderwall. Who had that? Second by Gatsy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. We will now convene as the Brookings County Board of Adjustment. The Board of Adjustment is a nine member board which has the power to hear requests for variances, conditional uses, appeals from the non ministerial decisions of the zoning officer. The concurring vote of two thirds. Of the full board membership of the board, six votes is necessary for approval of a variance or an appeal of the zoning officer. One right, one eh? Yeah. The concurring vote of a simple majority of those board members present and voting is necessary for approval of a conditional use permit. In accordance with Robert's Rules of Order, we require a motion to approve the request before it can be debated. As a matter of policy, all motions are to be made in a positive. The board under specific powers granted to it by the state shall authorize variances from the zoning requirements where special conditions existing on the land will result in an unnecessary hardship for the applicant. Financial disadvantage to the property owner shall not constitute proof of an unnecessary hardship. Agenda item 2022 variance 016. Kevin Deed. Tetzloff has made an application 2022 variance 016 to the Brookings County Board of Adjustment for a variance article 19, section 19 01 shelter belt setback requirements. The property is described as the north 1208 feet of the east 1443 feet of the northeast one fourth of section 36 township 111 north range 50W <laughs> Sterling Township located at 47179. 207th Street, Brookings, South Dakota, 57006. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Diedrich. Second. Second by Bartley. Richard, would you read the staff report? Yes, 2022 variant 016. Kevin Tetzloff has applied for variance to plant a shelter belt parallel with the road, 90 feet from the center of 472nd Avenue, a variance of 43 feet. The required setbacks for a shelter belt parallel with the road is 133 feet from the center of the road. 172nd Avenue is a Sterling Township Road, and he would like to plant a new five row shelter belt closer to the road to maximize his tillable farm ground. And the new shelter belt would align with an existing shelter belt on the east end, um, on the south end of his property. Letters were sent to the adjoining landowners, the Sterling Township Chairman and Clerk. And public <coughs> notices are published in the Brookings Register on August 23rd and 30th, 2022. Here is his variance application. The site map. This is 472nd Avenue right here. This is the yellow is proposed um, shelter belt uh, lining up with the east west shelter belt at the south end here. Here's the beacon map of his property. Uh, 207th on the north and 472nd Avenue on the east. 
Uh, this is the proposed area he would like to plant the shelter belt. Pictures of the area. Uh, this is just looking about halfway down the area where he would like to plant. This is looking towards the south along 472nd. Um, next picture is looking, just turned around looking towards the north. Um, this is looking at the west towards that area. Uh, right out there, you can barely see it, but that's where the wheel is at, 90 feet from the center of the road. Um, he did go out and mow the uh, approximate 90 feet, so this would be the distance where the trees would start, be right here in this left-hand side of that uh, swath cut area. Uh, this is, that was looking towards the north. This is looking towards the south. You can see it matches right up with the end of the east-west shelter belt down there. Um, this other picture is back 133 feet, where uh, the required distance is for the, according to the ordinance, 43 feet farther back than the other picture. And that's all that I have. We have heard no other comments from the township or adjoining landowners. And the applicant is here this evening. If the applicant would please step forward. Uh, make sure the green light's on and clearly state your name into the mic. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Do you have anything to add to Richard's report? No. Uh, oh, good report. Uh, just want to plant some shelter belt trees. I, uh, as the report stated, I enjoy participating in conservation efforts, planting trees, supporting wildlife, but I also want to try to maximize the tillable ground uh, that I would be taking up. Once I plant the trees, that area towards the township road likely would never be filled up again. It would be in just CRP or grass. Any questions from members of the board? As, uh, have you uh, contacted the township? Have they, they have anything to say about it? Yes, I contacted uh, Jim Haig, who's on the township board. He talked with the other township members. They didn't have any concerns uh, that they were aware of. They said they would not oppose this. So okay. I asked for a letter, and he said, well, we don't really do that. We just don't oppose it. We referenced it. And I did talk to the adjacent landowners as well. They had no issue. Any other questions from members of the board? Yeah, when this appears that it follows other shelter belts you have to the uh, south and the, uh, appears to be west, is that correct? <coughs> that was shown on the top that runs uh, vertical to this, us. The, that map there. Is the on map. the south end, yeah. runs east and west. Right there, you got it east and west and north and south, so you've, you've, it basically matches up with the other ones that you've put in that aren't next to a road. Correct. Are there any intersections at, you know, we always look at sight lines, and that's why the 133 feet got there in the first place with sight lines. Uh, there are no entrances or exits to any of that property there. There are no approaches on that quarter mile that I own, correct? Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from members of the board? Seeing, hearing none, just hang tight for a moment. I think you'll be all right there. Uh, I'll now open the public portion of the hearing. Anybody in the audience that is for this? Seeing and hearing none, is there anybody in the audience that is opposed to this? Seeing and hearing none, I'll now close the public portion of the hearing. Any additional comments or questions from members of the board? Seeing none, Richard would read the findings of the facts. Yes, bear with me here. The um, findings of facts disappeared from my uh, findings, so I will read the, add them in as we go. Uh, Brookings County Zoning Variance 2022 Variance 016, an application being made filed by Brookings County Zoning Commission at as a Brookings County Board of Adjustment, a copy of the application be attached here too. Such application being made by Kevin Tetzloff regarding the following rural property. The north 1,208 feet of the east 1,443 feet of the northeast one fourth of section 36 township 111 north range 50 west of the Brookings Prime, 5th Prime Meridian, Brookings County, South Dakota. After due notice, a public hearing having been held in the application on this sixth day of 
September 2022. Number one, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment hereby defining that the strict application of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance would produce undue hardship, <coughs> that such hardship is not shared generally by other properties in the same district and that the same vicinity, that authorization of such variance will not be a sub substantial detriment to the adjacent property and the character of the district will not be changed by granting of the variance and that the granting of the variance is based upon reasonable and demonstrable exceptional hardship and distinguished from variations for the purpose of convenience, profit, and caprice. Brookings County Board of Adjustment further finds that the condition or situation of the property concerned or the intended use of the property is not so general or reoccurring of nature as to make reasonable, practicable the formulation of a general regulation to be adopted as an amendment to the zoning ordinance. Number three, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further finding that the written application of the petitioner demonstrates that special conditions and circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land, structure, or buildings in the same district. That the literal interpretations of the provisions of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties in the same district under the terms of this ordinance. That the special conditions and circumstances do not result from the actions of the applicant that the granting of the variance requested will not confer on the applicant any special privilege that is denied by the ordinance to other land structures or buildings in the same district. Number four, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further finding that the reasons of set forth in the application justify the granting of the variance, and that the variance is a minimum variance will make possible <coughs> the reasonable use of the land, building, or structures, and that granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general purpose and the intent of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance, will not be injurious to the neighborhood or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. Number five, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further determines and conditions this variance upon the following special conditions or safeguards. This will be none stated. Brookings County Board of Adjustment by at least two thirds vote of its full membership hereby grants the petitioner variance for the budget above described real property as follows. Plant shelter belt. This variance is specifically conditioned upon initiative and continued compliance with all the conditions and safeguards in five above, upon compliance with all applicable provisions of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance. If approved, the Brookings County Zoning Director is authorized to issue any required building permits for construction consistent with the terms of this variance. This variance is not used in the three years of the date granted. It shall be invalid. Dated the sixth day of here up to the other Sterling Township has no objections anything else Chairman, I concur with finding that. Thank you, Mr. Diedrich. Looks good, Richard. Would you call the vote? Yes, Bartley. Aye. Paulson. Aye. Gatsky. Aye. Dietrich. Aye. Kleinjohn. Aye. Vanderwall. Aye. Troyan. Aye. Jensen. Yes. And Ford. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you all for your service. <clears throat> Moving on, we will now convene as the Brookings County Planning and Zoning Commission. 
The Brookings County Planning and Zoning Commission is a nine-member commission whose function is to recommend approval or disapproval of land use plans, zoning ordinances, <clears throat> subdivision plats, and amendments, therefore, of the Brookings County Commission. The commission makes its recommendation based on the adopted comprehensive plan for the physical development of the unincorporated areas of Brookings County. As a matter of policy, all motions are made in a positive. After a motion is moved and seconded, it is open for debate. Those supporting the motion shall in turn give their reasons. Those opposing the motion shall then offer their reasons. After everyone has been given a chance to be heard, the commission shall recommend approval or disapproval based on the testimony and information presented. A simple majority vote of a quorum of members of the Planning and Zoning Board in attendance is required to forward a recommendation. Agenda item 2022, Plat 025, Plat of Lots 1A and 1B, Block 2, Telkamp, 2nd Edition, in the southeast one-fourth of the southeast one-fourth of Section 13, Township 110, North Range 50W, of the 5th Primary in Brookings County, South Dakota. Is there a motion? Motion by Troyan. Second by Jensen. Richard, would you use the staff report? Yes, 2022, Plat 025, Lot, Lyle and Don Howie are planning off Lot 1A, 4.68 acres, and Lot 1B, 4.71 acres. Uh, the original 10-acre parcel, Lot 1 of Block 2 of Tell Camp, second edition, was platted on October 2nd, 1974. There was a vehicle repair shop and a horse stable currently on the property, and the property is located in the joint jurisdictional area. The existing easements and streets will maintain on the new plat as they were originally platted. The vehicle repair shop is on lot 1A and the horse stable is lot on 1B. Uh, lot 1A will continue with the current owner and the owners have a purchase agreement on lot 1B and the new owners will be applying for conditional use for a horse stable and boarding facility in the near future. Uh, the plant meets the planning requirements for 2016, 2016 comprehensive plan for the unincorporated, unincorporated rural areas and the joint jurisdictional area. The proposed plat. Lot 1B, 4.71 acres. Lot 1A, 4.68 acres. This existing easements here, existing street right away along here on the east side. They were just existing just like they were on the original plat. This is the proposed plat, how it looks on the beacon map. It would look on the beacon map. Come down the plat does meet. The buildings do meet the setbacks, current setback requirements from the front side and rear and all sides of the property. So this is the original plat, all one large 10 acre lot, dedicated easement here for the road, 66 foot wide, 66 foot wide here for access easement on the south side. So just that they're splitting the property in, um, into two separate parcels and it's been a horse stable in the auto mechanic shop since it was virtually platted way back in the, in the 70s. So just changing up the uh, configuration of it. And this parcel right here where the uh, machine shop is, auto repair shop will be all go into lot 1A right there. So this is the existing parcel the way it is right now. And that's all that I have. And the applicant is here this evening if you have any questions for that. The applicant, please step forward and clearly state your name into the mic. Good evening, I'm Don Howie. Hi. In case you guys have any questions, I guess I, I don't have any questions. Do you have anything to add to Richard's report? No, I thought he did a great job. <laughs> Any questions from members of the board? Simple and easy, just hang tight for a minute, I guess, sir. Since there's no questions from members of the board, I'll move to the public portion of the hearing. Is there anybody in the audience that is for this? Seeing and hearing none, is there anybody in the audience that is opposed to this? Seeing... Seeing and hearing none, I'll now close the public portion of the hearing. Is there any additional comments or questions from members of the board? 
What'd you call the vote? Paulson. Aye. Gatsky. Aye. Dietrich. Aye. Line John. Aye. Vanderwall. Aye. Troyan. Aye. Jensen. Yes. Bartley. Aye. And Ford. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you for your Thank time. You. Moving on, agenda item number 11. Discussion of action on our joint jurisdiction deal. Discussion, possible action. Discussion of possible action. Luke, are you there? I am okay. listening in. Just wanted to make sure you're here for this. Anybody have discussion on possibly taking action? Maybe I need to throw out a few options. That'd be a good idea. That's okay. there are options. Okay. Uh, as we discussed before, there are several different options we can look at. Uh, the first one would be to uh, have a motion that we move the uh, joint jurisdiction boundaries to the recommendation originally stated by the subcommittee. And if that were to pass, it would go back to the, uh, probably an open hearing of some sort, just with our commission, so that we have that opportunity for anybody that doesn't want it to do that to be able to testify. If that were to, to pass, instead of not pass, if it were to pass, we'd have to have a joint meeting with the city one more time to move that to the county commission and to the city council for their approval. That's one option. Another option would be to make that amendment and say that this, yep, understand that when we had that first joint meeting and a motion was made by the city planning commission to approve, and then it came to the county side for a motion to approve, and we made it a motion to approve. Subsequently, that motion, or the ordinance was amended to change it and change the zoning ordinances back to what the original zoning ordinances for jur jurisdiction boundaries were. That passed. At that point in time, the request was made to the city council or city planning commission to concur with that amendment, make an amendment to to change the ordinance as presented to reflect that change that the county had made. They did not make an amendment. At that point, there was no vote on either the county side nor the city side to move the, uh, move the uh, uh, ordinance forward, the joint jurisdictional ordinance forward. And so it just kind of died right then and there. And so we're in this sort of a limbo uh, area where it's limbo, uh, what do we do? We've got to move this thing forward, folks. Uh, uh, we're all public servants in this regard. Uh, we're charged with helping write these ordinances. It's been going on for more than the six years that I've been on the Planning Commission, but we need to, to move forward, and we can't let something stop us and not take any more action to, to move this forward. So the option is to, to, to either of those two things. Uh, at this point in time, if we pass Tonight we wouldn't have to make that motion. We can make it at a public hearing. We just have to agree that we're going to make a change. At a, or we're going to have another public hearing on that on that uh, that uh, uh, joint jurisdiction boundary area. Okay, our group, not the city's, but our group, and that gives the public time to come in, come in and make their thoughts known on it if they so choose. At that meeting, we could make a, an amendment or not. We can make an amendment to move it back, and if it fails, then we're back at no, nowhere land. Uh, understanding that there is not a movement on either side to, to change. And then all the work that's going on and by the subcommittees in this regard is basically on hold until somebody makes a change. So my question tonight, is there any interest at all, if I were to make a motion to have another public hearing to change the ordinance 
back to the original recommendation of the subcommittee. If there's no interest in doing that, then we're stuck. I'll try and answer any questions. Does anybody have a map of what land SDSU owns that yes. direction? Richard has a map of that. Yes, I do. This is all entities. This is it a, is oh SDSU God. Foundation. It is SDSU. It is South Dakota Board of Regents. That's the state of South Dakota. There's like six different entities that are listed for the different parcels of land that they own. Perfect. That's the hardest thing to find so far. The first one is just the entities within the joint jurisdictional area. This is not proposed what they're thinking about buying or what rumor mill has out there that they're going to buy. This is land that they own right now. This is not any proposals or anything like that, thinking, well, they might get this quarter out here or that one over there. That is not on here. See, the light pink areas is under SDSU. The aqua or blue area is under South Dakota State. The gold or yellow areas is under the South Dakota Board of Regents. The light green areas is the South Dakota Crop Improvement Association. Over here, the red area is the South, South Dakota SDSU Foundation, in the two red areas right there. There would be one change recently to that uh, uh, South Dakota Board of Regents property on the bypasses changed hands to the Harms family. So, which reflected this changes don't go through Beacon until the deeds have come through or if there's I understand. a... I just want to make sure that right, yep. people understand or the foundation doesn't own, or Regents don't own that property anymore. Or if property is split, it does not show up on the Beacon map until March of next year. Next map is the total area outside the joint jurisdictional area with the well, SDSU has a section of land over on east of White on Highway 30 over there. Um, Crop Improvement Association has some land south of Algo. So it's, that's the extent of what they have outside of that joint jurisdictional area. So. What is the city on? I did not do that. They would have the well field by the city, by the uh, ballpark, or by the racetrack right out here. We can turn the. And they recently purchased some land to protect that well field going up to the northeast. Let's see. Right. Right where we put that uh, tree trimming business. Yeah. That's not in this, their purchase, no. Yeah. the land around there. Yeah, it kind of goes up at an angle through there. And additionally, they bought some acreage over between uh, Brookings and Aurora uh, to the north of the well fields we have now to protect <coughs> those well fields. They bought that recently. As we had the discussion in the subcommittee group about that land and, and the uses of it, uh, they went ahead and bought it, so we don't have to regulate it. They regulate. The parcels in yellow it. would be all the... This would be the well fields right here, west of Novita. This would have been the property they just, the quarter they just purchased in the last year or two right here on the north side of the road. The well fields are existing right here. Um, 
This is the landfill right here. This is the Marlin Hill property that you purchased within the last two years. You can see that's the extent of us, how far out the city of Brookings actually owns uh, land right there. This is the wet water wastewater treatment plant down here. This is a quarter of CRP, which is across the road to the west of the sewer treatment plant. No, it'd be straight south on Western Avenue, mile west of the S curve. The, the well field areas on here, you know, they could potentially, if they come for sale, the city could buy um, land in the well field area to protect in that area. And here's the, this is the north well field, the hill property that they purchased to protect the integrity of that one right there, so. As far as the boundary goes, it's anything within the boundary of that joint jurisdictional area, unless it meets and the city planning commission agrees to rezone that property from agricultural to whatever zone the city has, it will stay agricultural zone. In the joint area, it has to meet the zoning requirements to be of the city to be rezoned into a city zone property. In addition to that, there are requirements for uh, uh, annexation. It has to be continuous. Continuous. Now you can bypass the university and say it's contiguous, but at the same time, the, there's no city services up there, so I don't know that there would be any move to annex it. We'd, there may be a discussion in the future as to what we want to do with, with uh, developments outside the joint jurisdiction area even, whether it be a... a Sunnyview type development or North Loop type of development out in the county. Right now, those developments would not happen simply because of the 35 acre rule, which protects the agricultural property out there. In the joint jurisdiction area we currently have, there would not be allowed to have any of those. If they came in for a request for that, it's in the joint jurisdiction area, and the city would basically say, uh, you know, we can't give you a permit. That's that's ag land and it's. Uh, even if we were to do it, you can't do it because of the 35 acre rule. So they'd just say you can't do it. Uh, so if there's a desire to try and take anything that's in the current, the current uh, boundaries and make that type of development, it probably is not gonna be allowed because the county ordinance says 35 acres. Unless you, this, this group were to change that that were approved by the county commission to change that 35 acre rule. Nothing could happen in that joint jurisdictional area. The rationale behind that is really simply, too many cities have, have uh, expanded their growth of these types of developments and you can't get around them to provide services to those groups of homes. Uh, an example even here in the city of Brookings is one on the south side of Main Street out there where they have their own septic system and they, they're not annexed. They want to be annexed because the cost to hook up to the city sewer system for them is pretty high per lot. They also don't meet the requirements for the width of the road and their system is failing and it's causing problems. So uh, that's the type of things I want to avoid. But those are things that that would be a, a county decision to, to, to change those ordinances within the joint jurisdiction to allow those things to happen. It's not part of the actual map, so to speak, other than the fact that it, expanding it to those uh, uh, boundaries they have there, if the university does indeed expand to the north, then that line automatically starts to move anyway because you have to protect the development properties there. So five, 10, 15 years down the road, we'd probably end up having to move them 
further from where they are now or where they might be with the new regulations. It might be less apt to happen shortly and more likely take them a, a long range look. Unless it's the uh, university's goal to, to not get landlocked by the city. If that's their goal, no matter what we do, we're not going to probably see that developed out there. If that's their goal, they'll buy the property and it won't happen. Just a guess if that's the goal of the university. We don't know what that is, and they're certainly not talking about it. And this is this is a proposed map that we had voted on at the subcommittee that um, the area in yellow is the original line that you voted to move the line back to that area. And they're all on um, halfway through midway points so we don't get the situation where one side of the road is ag and the other one side is city and they'll say well how come he can do it and how come i can't that's why they went through halfway through the quarter and not on a section line or a road line for that purpose thoughts or comments Anyway, we go, we're going to have another public hearing. I think that's fair to the people who well want to address this issue. The public hearing would be limited to the boundaries discussion. The when we had the last public hearing, it was obvious that the constituents that lived in this joint jurisdiction area specifically did not want to be in and and those were the ones that were at the meeting and said that they did not want to be in it uh, I understand what the city is trying to do but I also understand what the citizens of the county want too I mean they have rights just the same as us and it's kind of our duty on this board to push forward what they want and all of them that were here were in that area uh sorry to make you work harder richard here but how many building sites currently reside in this area this area right here the, where they expanded in, in the area that we're discussing moving the line back Sorry. Yeah. Thirty-five acres. No, uh, just building sites that are there. People who exist right now that oh, don't okay. want us out there. I understand. One of them is against us moving it out there just because of what has happened with the landfill, and there's. There's obviously a problem that needs to be addressed there, but that doesn't involve us right now or at all. That needs to be done between him and the city. The address points with the red dot should be There we go. So we go over... I believe right to here. One, two. There's only one right here. There was a trailer house there. Yeah, that's what I was going to question with that. Is it the um, same thing there? This one here is. Light 
else is there or not. Well, there's two, three, four, five, six, seven. Series. Vandy Weirds in the trailer park right there. I believe that cuts off in this area. Yeah, but all we're talking about stuff is, right? Where the line, where where the line's going to go, yeah. What's going to be in the new easement that's. On the, it does, okay. Goes west, not quite as far as it did. Well, I can show you right here. Well, I thought it was it went straight north and brought. So the stuff that went straight north got brought south as well. So basically, the shelter belt we just approved tonight will be in it. Tag. The only time it'll ever switch to city control is if somebody reapplies to rezone the property and it meets all the city requirements for whatever zoning district they want it to begin. Mr. Chair and Board, this is Luke here. I just, with the ability to be hiding here in the shadows and, and do the research on GIS without you, um, I did the quick selection of the areas, the old. Um, the old line versus the um, proposed new outline. I came up with 70 structures or uses that were mapped. And Richard, you remember driving the county with us and how we went about that. But um, abandoned feedlots were included as well as gravel pits, things that you would issue a permit for, houses, uh, trailer houses, things like that. Came up with 70 individual uses, two of which were abandoned sites, abandoned gravel pits. Uh, numerous uh, manufactured homes in that area, single family houses. There were a couple of sites that had uh, animals on them. I'm sorry to, to be general because I wasn't able to do the research uh, specifically, but I can tell you that there are 70 people doing uses that would need permits out there. Uh, back to Richard's point, right, there's no, the change would be that it would have it would have that ag district zoning still, so it's still walking through the door going to the county. 35 acre minimum lot requirement, the setbacks would be what were listed in there. Uh, the only difference that they would feel is if they need a variance, they'd walk in and they would see um, you know, six faces that wouldn't be from your board, uh, or six faces from your board would be gone, and there would be two replacements from the city's board. That would be effectively the primary difference. Um, in order to get to that point, uh, you update your ordinances to make them more closely resemble what state law would ask for. This does take in the Vanderwood trailer park. Is it still Vanderwood? It has been sold, but that's what I know. up to right here. This would be the quarter line right here, section 25 from across here. So Luke, since you got the fancy numbers in there, what does that 70 go to when you eliminate the trailer court out of it? Good question. Uh, let me get to that point. Probably down to 55, I would say. Kind of what I was thinking, but i just curious. Um, here, I can do it this way. If you bear with me, I can get it. Uh, remove from current primary use equals. Crap. Um, count 
21. Potential equals y. Um. Right, this is a, a separate building development. This here all that goes along with Vandy Words, used to be Vandy Words Trailer Park. It's now one by Ostrines, I believe. Yes. Um, if I eliminate all of the manufactured homes, it takes me way down to 38. But I do want you to keep in mind that gets rid of double wides and single wides. Some of those may be on farm sites. Yeah. So I might overshot as I did that selection. <laughs> Just want to let you know. Well, we know but so almost half of those, those are trailer houses. So by moving this, the only thing that will really change is if these people choose to expand, they will come before a different board as a conditional use to be approved by a joint board of the county and city. Farm operation. So... So basically, the ones that is, this affects most are the ones with farming operations within this livestock. I mean, because we went in this ordinance deal, we went to the wellhead protection area. Grain bins are conditional use so that it can be investigated case by case. But the rest of this will still function the same, but instead there it will be th three of us and two of the city. That would be on variances. And conditional uses. And conditional uses. Okay. And they'd still be limited to yeah. that class C, up to 750 head. And animal units. Animal units. Well, they could go up to, if they're expanding, they could go up to 750, if I remember right. Otherwise, it'd be within that area, it'd be 499. And then it would still have to bring it if it's in a location where the city is not there and it's on a, a good road. The city could sign off on it and say, yeah, go ahead. It's not an automatic no from the city. Each one's on a case-by-case -case basis. Do we have a map that shows current livestock feeding operations in the area we we're talking about? Because evidently that's the thing that's affected the most. One right here. Is that Jason? That's Jason. His father is over here. Another one over. They're already, They're already, in. They're already in there anyway. <laughs> There's another one on Western Avenue. Yeah, what's in, what I'm asking is what's in the area that we're proposing for new. All right, are, are you still there? I was able to do a little bit more research here while you're doing this, and I'm going to catch up to your question, Commissioner Ford. Um, I did a, I refined the, that question, uh, the first question of who's out there with egg. Now, don't, don't forget, this is only structures out there or things that might need a permit, like uh, feedlots or houses. We have 20... Uh, houses, it's either uses that qualify as, quote, agricultural uses or um, agricultural residences. We have 20 of them in this area. Um, and if you give me, well, here, I can do it. We have, and I'm 
I'm sorry, I'm not able to. Uh, actually, I might. Hang on. I might be able to tell you legal descriptions, at least, or general areas of where those are that have animals in them. And don't forget, the um, in this area, you are about 50-50 of the people that have animals. Let me just count here real quick. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, I think I've got 12. Um, let me count that again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 with, with animals. And I go a range. I've got one site with 1, 2 with 2, or sorry, 1 with 2, 1 with 4, one, 2 with 5. Um, those are all horses. Got another with 10 horses. And now these are very rough estimates because, again, I want you to keep in mind we did this uh, between uh, October and February. Uh, one site has 20 cattle, one with 50, two with 50, three with 50. And then one had over 100 pigs, or right around 100 pigs. That one is. Um, between sections that on three and four on 469th Avenue. Um, let's see here. One of the sites with cattle is straight north of there, another mile in between 34 and 33 on 469th. Uh, the, another 50, again, these are rough estimates, is on 207th on the uh, northeast corner of 207th and 472nd Avenue, that's Southwest Quarter, Section 30. And another one with 50 cattle was in, also on 207th, the middle of the section, um, right in the center of Section 26, uh, straight north of town is where that would be. And then we go down to this one that showed 20. That one is on the very northeast area of this. Um, 475th Avenue yeah, on the east edge of section 33, right in the middle of that section, or in the middle of that section on that road. The others were all horses uh, that we had in there. Not to say there haven't been changes since 2018, but just wanted to give you the full tour there, okay? So basically there would be considered hobby farmers. There's no class C's with 499 head out there existing right now, very few, if that. Yeah, that was, that was the summary or the consensus of the subcommittee. Was it in, in that stretch in particular, uh, while there may have been, you know, plans that might be out there, um, Clearly, there's nothing that's really bumping up on any numbers that are going to need any permits anytime soon. So, frankly, there's no way for us to know if somebody's out there uh, saying that's going to be the case any more so than it would be on a virgin quarter. Sodium rats in there somewhere too, and he's got a, a hoop on the feed jar. But I think Cody's up on 206, isn't he? This is where he's otherwise, his other farmers are up here, I believe. Or then you throw the aquifer protection on there. That's another limiting factor, what they can and cannot expand. If they're over this yellow area, that's a flag right there for expansion for 
going to a class C greater than 499 head. Let me get this right. So if you vote to accept the subcommittee's recommendation, um, it will to, to move the you know, back to where it was. That'll, you know, if help we expand. use the subcommittee's recommendation, it'll move it out to the green line from the yellow line. <laughs> They're trying to expand. And there was a group of farmers, so citizens. citizens that were in here when we had the joint meeting that were opposed to basically moving anywhere where the line moved north, they were not for it. And then we, we made a motion to move it back on the north side on the, the subcommittee's recommendation and there were some mistakes made possibly on a conflict of interest. So now we're trying to figure out where we go with that and how to move forward so that we can accomplish this, but do what's best for the citizens in the area. That we're done. And then when we voted, we voted to move it from the green to the back, from the green back to the yellow. And then the joint meeting with the City Planning Commission, the City Planning Commission voted to move it from the yellow to the green. And then... They but, never voted. I want to make sure I correct that. They never voted. They just left it because... They left they, it the way it was proposed. Exactly. They, they didn't take the amendment. They just left it at that. They, they didn't decide to vote on it. Also being before. said tonight of the, the joint did meeting. Yeah, neither did we. The joint meeting, we had a full board and then some, and they had four people. But. All right, let me, let me toss out a bomb for a third alternative, which uh, would involve the city and the county reestablishing a, a subcommittee to look at this specific issue would consist of a couple members appointed by the chairs of both committees, not necessarily the uh, uh, previous members, but who could report back to a solution to this issue to both the city and the county planning commissions at a joint public hearing that we could all at least agree on we have one more look at it and at that point hopefully we can have a public hearing explain why the if there was a compromise if we change this at all or we left it the way it is or we move move it back was the subcommittee's recommendation we take that recommendation so does the city and we move this forward to the county commission and the city council for approval and the the goal here is to get there's so many things that are important in the uh, joint jurisdiction and all the different other ordinances that we just need to get changed and updated and we dug our feet for a number of years. COVID didn't help us at all, I have to say that. We, uh, we, we kind of let everything lie for a long period of time. So it's time to, to move forward. So the, that's another, another third option I'll throw out there is to simply uh, agree to, to let the chairmen of both committees, uh, two names for consideration, Find two willing bodies, I guess, is probably the more uh, accurate at her. Yeah, yeah. Plus, you would have uh, Mike Struck and, and Richard uh, uh, advise the committee. So that they've got work to do. And I'd like to have it done in 45 days. I think that's enough time to, to find a solution on this and, and bring it back to both boards in a public hearing. That will give us a chance to, uh, to publish it and ask for a public hearing and move it forward. 
benefit of the new council the committee member, <clears throat> the perception was by one of the members on this board that I had a contract. And in all fact and fairness, I actually supported it. But when you have members of the community sitting out there vehemently opposed to it, who are living in that area, that's why I live in the northwestern corner of it, northeastern corner. But some members felt that I had a contract. So that's why this has gotten blown up. And frankly, it did. It did. It went way out of proportion. It went way overboard. I've already consulted two attorneys, and uh, <clears throat> anyway, we won't go down that road. So from the standpoint of my personal opinion, I'm not going to say that, but I am in the northeastern corner of that. I hear from all the landowners, because I've been a public servant, you're going to hear from the landowners. You guys do what you want. I don't fucking care. But I can tell you that those landowners are pretty up. And, uh, and leave it as, as it is. It doesn't matter to me. I've got goats and I've got horse and some cows. But, you know, with the wellhead protection and, and all that other stuff, distance from a residence, there's a setback issue for any kind of a cable. None of that area qualifies. So, do taxes go up a little bit? Probably. Maybe not. They say they don't. But it's just another level of control. So you can beat around the bush all you want, Mr. Bartley. Um, just come out with what you want to say. And you guys got to do what you got to do. It doesn't matter to me. But I also know that I did not have a conflict of interest. I failed to say where I live. But from a standpoint of a conflict of interest, I had none. And I consulted. Because heck, if any of you guys voted on a conflict of interest, the city wouldn't get anything done. Because the city zoning board is made up of people in the building community, along with people in this area. So you guys do what you want to do. That's a discussion to be held at a later time, a date. We do not need to get into that right now. So you want a subcommittee made up of two members of this board, two members of the city planning board, Richard and Mike. I guess at this point, my personal opinion is creating a subcommittee to look at this is going to be the best option. Excuse me. Because I, I feel that the members of this board are very lenient towards the way that we have it with moving it back. The city is going to be very heavy on moving it out. So we are just going to continually beat our heads against each other if nobody wants to move. 
So this subcommittee is the only way to get some form of a solution in this. Uh, do you guys think I'm right, wrong? Where, where are you guys leaning on this? But even if the subcommittee comes up with a recommendation, we still have to agree on that recommendation and vote to approve that. Yes. But I, I, how else are we going to create a solution? Because I thought, my thought is this is far enough out of town that it's going to take them a long, long time for the city to get that far. And why do they need that control out there? That's my thought. 25 years before they get there. Yeah. So why do they need control over those sections when it's going to be that long before they get there? What's your thoughts, Mr. Vanderwall? I'm in agreement with Mr. Kleinjohn on that. Mr. Tryon? What's the advantage? What does the city want this property for, bottom line? Expansion? Well, it's to protect the development of the city from going around subdevelopments and things that don't meet city standards when you move out there creating issues like we have in several areas in the joint jurisdiction now that so, so are really they, difficult it, to resolve. So they feel they're boxed in right now and they want to expand. They want to jump in front of SDSU out in front and get... They don't have any plans to expand. They're not going to encourage development. That happens from the private sector. It's the, how you react to it is how you do your planning ahead of time. But the the statement with expanding around developments they're worried about building around one house every 40 acres 35 acres four houses a section you know that everything in here would fall into the 35 acres yeah if they want to build a house in this this particular area is 35 acres it's our decision not theirs yep so potentially If there was no houses, Mr. Chair. In the yes, Luke. Mr. Chair, at this, I'll just I'm going to try to lay it out as directly as I can. I mean, the the reason that a city would expand its joint jurisdiction area there there are two reasons. One, and this was heard during our subcommittee meetings over the last five years. We heard it a couple times in staff meetings. Whether you, or at least in these planning commission meetings, whether whether you agree with it or not where the city stands on it is the last time this was updated was 40 years ago and their plans are going out 25 years. We just made the note, it's not gonna be, it, it'll be more than 25 years before the city gets anywhere near that point. Uh, you're probably right. Um, and, and again, that's not from the guy who made the plan, that's just, I mean, that's logic uh, falling in. Uh, number two, the reason that they would be concerned um, the 35-acre rule is essentially the same, whether you have that there or not. Realistically, and I'm, I'm just going to lay it out there because I've got to, my job is to point out, they're, the biggest concern that would probably be out there are the uses in your ordinance, whether it's the difference between the Ag District in the joint area versus the Ag District here, or primarily the potential to rezone property for some sort of commercial industrial use out on the fringe of that area that they may have to grow around, uh, take services to that they're not capable of, uh, et cetera. I mean, that I, I, I'm really summarizing a whole lot of land use theory down into just a couple of sentences. So just for example, Sioux Falls and the new swine packing plant, this would rule that out from happening in this area something of that sort be a commercial deal that's not within the city well it's it's a bit different but i think i think the better example see see in brookings and 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 uh let, let me let me think on that well, if right you had a swine packing facility 
it would kind of be moot if it was outside of the joint jurisdiction area, uh, because you've got that you've got that other uses in the egg district, uh, uh, egg facility. But it is it is similar in the similar vein though that if there's a use that's allowed out on the fringe of that area or potentially you would say, cool, this is right on the outside, we can rezone this and it's fine because our rules aren't the same and we don't have to have the city involved. Now, I don't want to say that that's exactly what people are saying, but that's the bottom line is that's, that's the benefit to a city uh, adopting a joint jurisdiction area or expanding it out into that area. So... Uh, right, wrong, or otherwise, that's that's essentially what's being gained when it comes right down to it. Yeah, because, Mr. Chairman, the Sioux Falls thing, that that plant is actually within city limits industrial. So yeah. that's, that's, you're talking apples and oranges now if you're talking okay, that, kind I, of, that kind of facility. That's why I tried to pivot away from it, too, uh, Mr. Well, Hill, is that yeah. that's, that's in city limits, and that's actually one that ironically – would be allowed in the joint area of the Minnehaha County Joint Jurisdiction. It would be allowed in city limits, and it would be allowed out there. So uh, stick more to group homes or was, yeah. things like that. So like a teen challenge would not be allowed out there? That would um, it would have different boards room. involved. Like the best example would be that um, it would be a completely different animal out into that, that area. Um, it would it would be in town. It would be expected to be on a smaller piece of property, whereas here it would have to be on a bigger piece of property. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. That's really dependent on where you come from. That is up to you, Mr. Gatsky. No, I, I think like a teen challenge. But that, that'd be a group home. Yeah, that would have to get hit by a permit, right? Yeah. accessible by the city for services and they annex it. Yeah. Then it's off our hands. We wouldn't have any jurisdiction on it at that point once they annexed it and rezoned it. I think I got that right. I would imagine if something come up like somebody proposing something like Sunny View or something like that up in that area, we would most likely turn uh, something like that down. We would not allow something like that up there, would we? Not under the current ordinance. Not no. under our current ordinance, no, because it's yeah. land development to. districts are not allowed. And yeah. all those developments were developed prior to the zoning ordinance in 76. That's how yeah. all the uses out there got started. In order so for if that, that's their concern, that can't happen anyway. Not unless the county changes its ordinance. Mm -hmm. yeah. But as soon it has to start with this group. So if it doesn't start with this group, it doesn't happen. County Commission can't, can't make that change. How does bring it forward? And the land would have to be continuous to the city limits in order for it to be annexed into the city. They cannot be across two sections away, it has to be continuous touching that city property to be zoned into the city. I heard it. See, really what we're stifling in this whole deal is for someone like Paul or Eric Sterud who currently have pigs from expanding beyond that 499 head point 
you know, he's got a whole quarter sitting there. He could drop a hog unit right in the middle of that. That that hog unit would be good for 40, 50 years. And then 50 years from now when Brickings wants to expand out there, that hog unit is shot anyway. You know, the they don't last the, forever. Where, where we run into trouble with that is when he waits 20 years to do it. And then the city's 30 years out. And it's still a functioning use when the city's trying to dump. That's, I believe that's what really, you know. If anybody, anybody in that deal wanted to come in here right now and build a monoslope or a slat barn or a hog confinement barn within the next two years, let them. Because the useful life cycle of that building is going to be gone before the city gets there. That's so to go back to uh, Mr. Bartley's point is to create a subcommittee to try to push this issue through to get either side to move one direction or another just for the benefit of the 10,000 other things that we need to get through, I think would be the smartest. I, I think we're going to have to. I'm with you on that. I think we're going to have to create a subcommittee of the city and the county and be prepared to eat crow on whatever they come up with. It's yeah, I, to me, if, if it is in the residents that are there, the, if they're that opposed to it, then adamantly so. Um, like you're saying, and Mr. Manuel brought up, if they want to do that right now, think it's that big of a deal but i mean we're we're talking about a lot of what if here. yeah um but to move the rest of the 90 page document forward to jump this hurdle i think it's something that could probably get handled i think that's my opinion well and i, I the subcommittee trying to find the solution between the city and the county is the only way that we're going to find common ground because right now I feel like we're heavily voted our way and they're heavily voted their way and nothing's going to happen. So, not necessarily. No, I would. I would. Not I necessarily. With that statement. If well, the subcommittee. I, I I think that's kind of what Chad said, but I to me. If I were the city, and the two commissions sitting there looking at each other, if this is what we're stumbling over, then let's figure out something. You, you may get a solution that basically says to the city, we're going to move it back like we amended it. That two people have, they have some influence on their board, just as they would should have influence on our board. If our decision is, or our two committee members say, we're not going to budge, and then they can have a conversation and explain why, more so than what happened at that meeting, and all of the questions you asked tonight and other things that Luke can answer or that, that uh, Mike can answer and that Richard can answer, they may come up with a solution that they say, well, let's move it back, let's move forward. We don't know that. We're not talking. That's why we've got to have a subcommittee. We've got to have them work it out, come back to us with a solution. They may say, well, okay, well, let's slop this one off over here and make it closer to there, and there's our solution. And everybody agrees that that's, that's what we need to do. I have no idea what they'll come up with for a solution. All I want is to make sure they get together, they talk, and they come up with a solution to present to both boards. And second of all, they could come back and say, okay, yep, we're going to move it back out, but us as a board could still say, no, nope, that's not going to happen. And then it still sits where it is, right? I, it, th this I is Luke here. I, 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 if if it's possible, I'd like to enter the discussion one more time here. Um, in light of in light of that point that was just made, I want to propose one more solution, and and I I don't want to muddy it more. I think you're really between two solutions, three solutions, right? Sit and wait. Um, let it die on the vine or let someone else pick it up. I really hope you don't do that. 
uh, solution two is to have a subcommittee of the groups that we just talked about. Uh, consider whether or not, for what it's worth, that you want to invite the townships that are a part of that to that subcommittee. Uh, option number three is just call and invite the city the city planning commission to another meeting with one item, a discussion item, what we're doing tonight. The same thing. And do the same thing and discuss it out um, with them because I'll be perfectly honest, I think that uh, I'm, I'm reading on YouTube eight second delay kind of the same body language that I feel, which is I really don't want to go through another subcommittee meeting only to find out the same thing. So um, if you're in that boat that's leery about doing this and still not being sure that we're going to be any farther down the road, that is one other option. Uh, and again, I would suggest if, that, if you do that, that I would suggest inviting the township supervisors to that one too. So those are, just kind of lay that out there. Those are really the three options that are in front of you. Luke. Uh, question yeah. for you here and something I just thought of here. Um, can we propose it? Uh, would there be a way that we could propose it to the city to move it back to the original line and to be revisited by a subcommittee every five or seven years so that it doesn't go well, I... 40 years again until we do this so that it can be added back as needed? Yes, there's a, there's a component to this that we haven't discussed much, only because of the fact that we know it's got to come out there and we know that this document itself has lasted us over five years, and that is the land use plans. Um, a, a component of this, as at the time of adopting it, both of us have to adopt the same land use plans, and one policy within that could be the administrative policy that we review the boundaries every X amount of years. Otherwise, I mean, I'll be honest, I sat on, I've, I've been doing this job for uh, over, well over a dozen years, and I mean, I know that you hold more meetings than I've been to with the joint board, but the fact of the matter is you guys don't get together very often, and it would be, uh, it would behoove you to just sit down and talk specifically about where are we going and does it make sense, because let's face it, part of, I think, what has really gone on here is that you're moving a line or talking about moving a line over the course of a 40-year growth period. If this was five years, you'd be talking about one section or a half a section. But you're talking about 40 years of growth, so you're talking miles, not, not half sections. That's why I was thinking it created so that it's in our wording, so that it's reviewed every so often, so it becomes more of a living, adapting document than a... 40-year set-in-stone document, which would be better for all parties involved. And I think my opinion of having it so it was reviewed every five to seven years is going to be the thing that potentially makes the city and the county come together on this. I, I don't... What do you guys think of that for a solution to this? You think that would work? Because right now we got... They're not here, but we're pretty sure their heels are dug into the dirt just the same as ours. I'm not exactly sure of that. Yeah. I, I Just a feeling. Well, yeah, but again, they only had four members on their board That's that evening. That's the other problem. And uh, they're, they, they have the opportunity have to visit tonight. with them. I thought through a subcommittee, which would be quicker and easier to get together than scheduling both boards at one time it's extremely difficult and if you want to have public testimony at it then it gets even more cumbersome unless you're going to have it without public comment and then come up with a solution that both boards have to vote on at a public hearing and move it forward to the, to the two entities so you could certainly try and get the two boards together it's just Logistically, I think it's an issue sometimes. That's why the suggestion of subcommittee, but it, well, and the problem with logistically currently is exactly we're three weeks from go time on the majority of this board. Commissioner yeah. mm -hmm. uh, we put the subcommittee together. Subcommittee goes through their discussion and comes up with a proposed solution. 
what's our what's that next step that actually gets the, the city and the county back together again to vote for or against their city? We would have another joint meeting with them and you know, hopefully it would have a solution that both boards could support rather than starting all over again or not supporting it otherwise. Uh, there's no point in having a subcommittee. Would there uh, be a requirement for another uh, public hearing? There would be, yes. After, yeah. after the two the joint jurisdiction? You would probably do it at the same time. And then act on moving the two resolutions, uh, the, the entire ordinance forward. As, that, as was stated, we also have land use. Uh, the city has a land use plan that we have to, they have to approve. Well, we've got all the other stuff that's in our zoning ordinance that we have to address yet, too. It's been sitting there for six years or better. Our, our land use plans, our comprehensive plan, which it's our, our comp plan, is fully, yes. fully in effect. Yep. Those have to be adopted in addition to the joint jurisdiction. As far as Chairman Ford's idea, I think that's got a lot of validity to it. You know to be able to revisit that boundary in a shorter amount of time maybe we could hit that compromise with the city and they'd say yeah let's leave the line where it is now because we can revisit this so do we want to try and find somebody to take something like that to a subcommittee and then or do we want to get everybody together and hit them with it all at one time if we could talk to the city themselves and it would sure move things along a whole lot faster than a subcommittee. Subcommittee is going to take a lot of time and you still don't know if anybody's going to agree with what the subcommittee says. So if we could get together with the city commission and have them come and just talk about it and come up with something that then we have something accomplished. So right now, the, the consensus on that side of the room is to set up a joint city-county meeting and have the discussion there with full boards present. And that way, we have Richard and Mike here and Luke and Bob, if we have to. And we can see what happens and hopefully the... I. The thing I see is the reason I come up with the thought process there is it's compromise on both sides and it shows willingness to look into the future as the future approaches. All those ideas can be brought up at that meeting. I think if you get a subcommittee in between that's just going to drag everything out longer, is what I think. So I'm trying to get a subcommittee done in 45 days. We've sat here for an hour working on just this. Then you've got to be willing come October first meeting to be willing to step up and come to the meeting so you're here and be heard. If you need to find somebody to run the combine or... Mm -hmm. digger or solid shopper or something but just take that into consideration exactly so show of hands who wants to have the full board who wants to have a who wants to have a full board Who wants to have a subcommittee? So it's five to three. Do the full board and move forward. If full board fails, we can move to a subcommittee from there to yep. discuss a compromise. The full board and see where we go. We just, we have to be willing to present solutions. And I think. Does this have to be done in October? 
What's our timeline here? Yeah, is there a point in time where everything just fails? Because of the yeah. No, what, what, what would happen is we would have to vote on it one way or the other. If you, if you vote that you don't like it, that's fine. And if you vote for it, that's fine. And at, at, at some point, it's going to be given to the county commission and the city council to take action. It's obviously best if we have a recommendation from the planning board to approve it. But I, mean, I could also take it to the, to the county commission and say the planning board did not approve it, refused to vote on it, or couldn't get a motion to vote on it, and hand it over to them. But the, the planning board has to be given the opportunity to review it, have public hearings, whole nine yards, and then if the process, just like if, if we ask for a, uh, to move in a used home and someone refuses, or if a township refuses to give, give someone permission for a road agreement, you know, it comes a point where the county commission can step in and, and take over. Is that right, Mr. Mueller? Well, yeah, I, I'm going to, I'm just going to catch you up here. Procedurally, what you're going to run into is it's the, the path you're going down now, and I do realize that I put this in front of you, but the path you're going down now ensures you're going to have two joint meetings. I mean, that's the fact of the matter. You're going to have a joint meeting to discuss this with the city board at your October meeting somewhere in between when theirs gets over and yours starts. There should be time. Um, and then you're going to come up with a solution in theory at that meeting, and then you're going to publish a notice. You're going to hold a public hearing on that single change. And that's mostly from a logic standpoint because of the fact that People walked out the door assuming that this was going to be the boundary, whatever it was, in June. So you're going to publish that notice. You're going to hold a public hearing on that boundary change, and then you're going to vote on it. That's how that's going to go. So, yes, there is the other solution, as Mr. Hill mentioned, is that at some point the commissioners and or the council just say, you know what, if you're not going to decide, we're going to have to figure this out for you. And... Then, then it goes with the recommendations that are in front of them, and there may or may not have to be extra public hearings that go on with that, too. Well, I think if there's time in October for a joint, we just do the joint then. How long does the public hearing have to be scheduled? 14 days. So... One's our meeting, October 4th, so the 18th would be the soonest we could have a public hearing meeting, or 19th, excuse me, so does that suffice into a timeline to complete things before the end of the year, if we can accomplish this? The commission has to wait 14 days also. The county commission. Were you thinking a special meeting when you mentioned the 18th? Well, just so we can push this along, it's going to have to be a special meeting for the public hearing. Right, that would have to be a special meeting. That so, would be, the sooner she could have that would be the 25th of October due to publication deadline. So. But End of the year is not a in stone deadline. It's just a goal for us to keep moving forward. Yeah. 
Uh, you got to also remember, though, that our November meeting seventh, mm -hmm. and isn't that election day? Oh, oh, yeah. So we'd have to move to be the first, right? Or seventh to November. Yeah. First Tuesday in November. Oh, so, November we, first. so we, so we seven, would be ahead of the, yeah. of the. Well, then, yeah, from the 25th to the first, okay. not a big deal. We're talking six days. Halloween's on a Monday. That's what you're worrying about. <laughs> he has got to work on. He's got to work on this mask. Hey, <laughs> I'm going to be collecting dad tax all day on Tuesday. So what, what's your consensus? So the consensus as a group is to first October joint jurisdiction meeting. Talk to him about a solution of the sort and pray that something goes through which yeah because if you go to a subcommittee that's going to take 45 days yep and then we're gonna have to go through this process yep. after Again. that anyway so if we can eliminate that 45 days that's a better option right now yeah it, going to put, you just put it at 30 days yep right and if we show up at the meetings and they have their heels locked in and won't move on anything, then Moving then on. I guess that's where we are. Yeah, that that's right. Then you would just vote, vote, and then I think we make the, the motion how we see fit, and they make the motion how they see fit, and yep. But we do we would like an answer next time at the you know when yep. you guys decide, just give me an answer and and we'll we'll take it. And then do I understand that the county commission can overrule what we decide? Yes. I'm not saying they will. I'm just saying mm -hmm. they got the they capability of doing it. Because there's, see, there's a, there's a, like, whatever body it is that makes the laws, that's, um, we're the yep. ones that make recommendations to them. <clears throat> okay. So that's what we want to do? We don't need to vote on it. Right. There, won't be, just a, there won't be public testimony at the joint meeting. No. Nope. Public testimony at public hearing. That will yeah. not be a public hearing? The, the public hearing would be at the November meeting then. We would vote. Right. No. The only thing would be, I guess, you would get your consensus at the October meeting to bring it to the November meeting, and then you would vote on it. Hopefully. Right, you'd have to, yep, public hearing, then you'd vote after that. That would be the only reason to possibly do it the 25th, is if you think the public hearing could take a while and we get slammed on a November agenda. Correct, and with election night. Mr. Chair, it's not like we're sleeping that time of the year anyway. I'd like to one night. <laughs> <laughs> if we're not here, we're in a combine. We'll be done. Okay. So, we're good with that? We're good, but we also have to make sure that the city we'll is get, okay we, with we it. We, we need to talk to that. Richard needs to talk to Mike and as chairman and make sure that those dates work for them. And go to October, it would be, we'd probably meet at seven o'clock versus eight o'clock because our meetings don't change until November. So. Fair enough. Seven o'clock work. If we can get this deal done, yeah. Okay. So that concludes that. Department reports. Yes, I'll start off. Next week, I'm going to a South Dakota Association of County Commissions meeting, and there looks like there's a good a good session on 
uh, solar energy. We, we've got our wind. We got the wind energy down pretty pat, and it looks like they're giving a presentation. I don't know if it's Luke or who, but someone's coming out the pier to give a presentation on solar, which I'm going to attend, and I'll let you guys know what's going on. And after that, the same week, I'm coming back, and Richard's coming over to her on, and we got a big emergency management conference going on. And other than that, Ray Lynn will be updating the joint jurisdiction ordinance and staying back here and holding the fort down and telling us what to do. And that's all I got. Richard's got some stuff, I believe. Get the right parcel lined up here. Just on interpretation of a buildable site, I guess, here. Um, This site does not have a 911 address. Which side of the road? The west side, right here. It was purchased in 1973 with a uh, house, cistern, barn, silo, hog shed, multiple buildings out there. Um, they were vacant, at, they were used, and they were destroyed or taken down just due to vandalism and neglect in the 1980s to eliminate that. Risk out there for the landowner. Oh. Where are we at? I got this down here. This here are the pictures of a foundation I have lined up. On that, where's our zoom? Over there, there's a picture of a stone right there. There's another cement portion of the foundation. More obvious signs where the house was there. Trees have grown up around it. Um, with following this, our ordinance, why not? We have allowed this in the past. Just bring this to your conclusion, your voices. This would be a buildable site considered with our uh, history in the past and our ordinance like that. So We also got a sign. Go ahead and put the sign letter up. And we have a, yeah, this is a letter from the landowner, which we have allowed also. There is remnants of the foundation, and we have a signed letter, so we have allowed those building sites in the past to be developed. And the one across the road is the same way. There's pictures of the house. There's documentation in the Equalization Office when the house was there. We have pictures back when it was there from Google Maps. and. So, so there's that would be the second confirmation of a house being there. Then. Being a buildable site with the it house. Yes, it does. Yep. There's no question it's a buildable site. Okay. We like to bring these kind of issues to the board to make sure that you're on the same sheet of music that we're on in, in the office. Because you sometimes people will start building a house out there and they're asked you as a zoning board member, you know, what's going on, why don't they have 35 acres, so on and so forth. In this way, at least you're aware of the situation and why we made that decision. For information only. Right, and each one's on a case-by-case -case basis. This is no definite termination from here on out, the next site they bring in would be a buildable site. Each one's on a case-by-case -case factual finding mission on there. We've had ones that come in, they say, yeah, there was a house there, but yeah, you go back in the 1909 homestead book, and there's not a plot there, not a dot there, and we deny it. So. Fair enough. And that's all that I have.
Luke, do you have anything? No, sir. I've talked enough. Thanks. Good answer. Is there any need for an executive session? No, sir. Your motion to adjourn. So move. Motion by Diedrich. Second. Second by Vanderwall. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone, and welcome, new board member.